is yes i will call upon the lord for he is worthy to be praised hosanna hosanna jesus is the rock jesus is the rock of my salvation hosanna jesus is the rock jesus is the rock of my salvation i will call upon the lord for he for he is worthy to be prayed hallelujah i will call upon the lord for he is worthy to be praised so shall i be saved from my enemy the lord liveth and blessed be the rock oh yes blessed be the rock of my salvation the lord liveth blessed be the rock blessed be the rock of my salvation the lord liveth and blessed be the rock blessed be the rock of my salvation the lord liveth blessed be the rock blessed be the rock of my salvation hosanna hosanna blessed be the rock blessed be the rock of my salvation hosanna blessed be the rock blessed be the rock of my salvation i will call upon the lord for he is worthy to be praised i will call upon the lord for he is worthy to be praised hosanna blessed be the rock blessed be the rock of my salvation Hosanna, blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna, we worship, Jesus is the rock, Jesus is the rock of my salvation. Hosanna, Jesus is the rock. Jesus is the rock of my salvation. Hosanna. Jesus is the rock. Jesus is the rock of my salvation. Hosanna. Jesus is the rock. Jesus is the rock of my salvation. Jesus is the rock of my salvation. Hallelujah. We exalt your name, O God. We exalt your name. Hallelujah. We lift up the name of Jesus this evening. We give you the glory and the honor that is due your name. Hallelujah, Lord. We invite you, Lord. Fill our space. Fill every space where we are, Lord and be glorified this evening in this place be glorified this evening as we worship you hallelujah hallelujah lord hallelujah hallelujah behold he comes riding on the clouds shining like the sun at the trumpet call lift your voice is the year of jubilee and out of Zion's hill salvation. Behold, behold, he comes riding on the clouds, shining like the sun. At the trumpet call, lift your voice. It's the year of Jubilee. And out of Zion's hill salvation comes. There's no God. There's no God like Jehovah. 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 
There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. Behold, he comes shining like the sun, riding on the clouds. At the trumpet call, lift your voice. It's the year of Jubilee. And out of Zion's hill, salvation come. Behold, he comes riding on the clouds, shining like the sun. At the trumpet call, lift your voice. It's the year of Jubilee. And out of Zion's hill, salvation come. Well, these are the days of Elijah declaring the word of the Lord. And these are the days of your servant Moses, righteousness being restored. Oh, and these are the days of great trials, of famine and darkness and sword. Still we, still we are the voice in the desert crying prepare ye the way of the lord behold he comes riding on the clouds shining like the sun at the trumpet call lift your voice it's the year of jubilee and out of zion's hill salvation comes behold he comes riding on the clouds shining like the sun at the trumpet call, lift your voice. It's the year of Jubilee, and out of Zion's hill, salvation come. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God, our God. There's no God like Jehovah. 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 There's no God, no God. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. Hallelujah. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God. Behold, he comes riding on the clouds, shining like the sun. At the trumpet call, we lift our voice. It's the year of Jubilee, and out of Zion's hill, salvation comes. Lift your voice. It's the year of Jubilee. And out of Zion's hill, salvation come. Lift your voice. It's the year of Jubilee. And out of Zion's hills, salvation comes. Hallelujah. 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 We have a hope. We have confidence in you, O oh God. Hallelujah. We join with the angels and we cry, worthy, 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 worthy is our king. Worthy is our father. Worthy is our Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, we love him this evening. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We just want to declare that he is our everything this evening. No matter what you may be facing, no matter what I may be facing, Jesus is our everything. And because of him, we have the victory this evening. Hallelujah. Everything, everything, Lord, you are everything to me. Everything, everything, oh, Lord, you are everything to me, everything, yes, Lord, everything, Lord, you 
are. Everything to me, everything, everything. Lord, you are everything to me, my treasure my priority who can compare to you great is the measure of your royalty oh morning star you truly are everything my treasure my priority who can compare to you great is the measure of your royalty oh morning star you truly are oh morning star you truly are oh morning star you truly are everything hallelujah 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 Yes, he is this evening, saints. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. Praise his wonderful name. I hand back over to Sister Alberta this time. Hallelujah. Indeed, Lord, you are everything, everything, everything. And we need to always be reminded of that because a lot of stuff gets in the way between you and God. And then you have to be reminded that he's our everything. So we just want to just, you know, just be silent for a few seconds and just really take in that a little bit, that he's our everything. So we're doing a little shoveling, shifting out some stuff that got piling between you and God. And just putting him back in his rightful place as we just are silent before him for a few seconds. And uh, coming out from that atmosphere of you know, reverence and silence before him. We even want to con welcome the continued teaching on the Holy Spirit, who is our comforter, our guide, our everything, and to lead us again in that uh, expounding of the wisdom and knowledge and the work of the Holy Spirit in us. We would like to invite our dear pastor, Reverend Dr. Mel Spope, to minister unto us at this time. And we continue to pray that God will give him that strength and encouragement that he requires as he receives and imparts unto us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you very much, Sister Alberta. Alexander, God bless you. I receive that. I receive that blessing. Thank you very much, Minister Sean Alvarez. God bless you as we continue to work together. And greetings to all on this platform. And if you're joining us later, thank you very much. We encourage you to connect with us. We encourage you to commit to him. We encourage you to commune with him, talk to him. And it is such a joy to know that we could just wait in his presence. The Bible reminds us that they that wait upon the Lord 
and sometimes it's just being silent. I know it is difficult for most of us to be quiet and silent in the presence of God. But sometimes this is all that we need to do because we have prayed a lot. We have called upon him and, and now we are tired. And I could hear the spirit of the Lord saying, yes, I am glad that you are tired physically and you, you now have to wait on me, wait in my presence. Hallelujah. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, says the scripture. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse number 31. So thank you, Father, this evening again for the privilege and the honor that you have given to us to connect in a way like this, Father. What the enemy meant for evil, you have turned it around for good because we are praying more, we are communing more with you, we are connecting more. Blessed be the wonderful name of the Lord. Let the Holy Spirit truly take preeminence in our lives as we continue to depend upon him in the name of Jesus the Christ. Hallelujah. Well, we want to look this evening as to the Holy Spirit in the life of Jesus, our perfect example. The Holy Spirit in the life of Jesus Christ, he is our perfect example. Now, the text that I want to be reading tonight and I trust that you are taking the notes, you're taking the scriptures down so that you can reflect on it, you can reminisce, you can meditate, you can read it for your devotions, and then seek to apply the truths, the truth of God's word. This is what brings about the transformation or the change in our lives as we apply the word of God. But before we do that, before we deal with the Holy Spirit in the life of Jesus, our perfect example, let's do a little recapping. Last week, we, we mentioned the, the person of the Holy Spirit. We spoke of the fact that in John 14, when he comes, he will, he will do this. He will lead us into all truth. John 14, 26, John 16, um, uh, about 7 to 13. You know, he, the person of the Holy Spirit, not just the personality, but the person. We also mention the fact that he is the third person in the Godhead or of the Godhead. Remember, you will not find the word Trinity in the word of God. No, it is a, a, a word, of course, made by, you know, put together by man. But what we find in the scriptures, the Godhead. Now, we also mention that Jesus Christ, uh, the Holy Spirit rather, he is co-eternal, co-essential, co-glorious, co-eternal. Yes, the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So he is God, the third person of the Godhead. And we need to recognize him and depend upon him. The Bible reminds us, 
1 John 5, 6, and 7, that the tree that bear record in heaven, the seventh verse tells us of 1 John chapter 5, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. It is not something that we are making up. Jesus, after his resurrection, told his disciples, as you go, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Three persons, yet one God, not three personalities. We're not talking about Trinitarianism, no. Three persons, three distinct persons. Yes, the Father spoke from heaven during the baptism of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit descended upon him in the form of a dove. Yes, and then Jesus was there, the Word, the living Word of Almighty God. Yes, so the need for him in our lives, the Holy Spirit, and to depend upon him is so important. The need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit is so important. And we're going to be getting into some of that. How do I, you know, how do I know that I'm baptized in the Holy Ghost? in the Holy Spirit. So we will be checking that out. So we want to come to the place where instead of saying something tell me, I must be able to confidently declare the Holy Spirit told me. That still small voice, remember, John 14, 17 tells us, he shall abide with you forever. Praise be unto God. So neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor height, nor depth, depth nor things to come shall ever be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord, he is with us always. Glory be to God. In the book of Ephesians, the first chapter, the 13th and 14th verses, the Holy Ghost is given. He is the one who seals us unto the day of redemption. Okay, so let's get into what we want to be sharing tonight. We're looking at the Holy Spirit now in the life of Jesus Christ. Of course, Jesus Christ is a perfect example. Jesus Christ ought to be our model. We are to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. We are to be conformed to Christ likeness, Romans chapter eight and verse number 29. I trust that you are taking the scripture verses down. Yes, to be conformed to the image of Christ. And this is done for us. This is done through us by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the Holy Spirit rather in our lives. So let's go. Now, Philippians chapter 2, from the fifth verse, from the fifth verse onto the eleventh verse. I am reading that, that, that portion, and then I'm going to come to John 3, John chapter 3, from verses 30 to 36. I may not read all of that. And then I'm going to go to Luke chapter 4 from verse 1 to about 
verse number 28. Again, I'm not going to be reading all those scriptures, but I want you to take them down. Again, Philippians 2, 5 to 11, then John chapter 3, from verses 30 to 36, and then the last portion of scripture would be Luke chapter 4, from verse 1 to verse 13. So let's go. Here's what the word of God says here. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee must bow, of things in heaven and things on earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And then I go to John chapter 3 and uh, from verse number 30. Here's what it says here. He must increase, but I must decrease. This is John the Baptist, the forerunner, speaking about his Lord the Lord Jesus Christ, his example. Remember, John looked at him when he was coming and he says, behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. But so, verse 31, he that cometh from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthly and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. Let me drop down, please, to verse number 34. For he whom God hath sent speaketh the words of God, for God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. For God giveth. Notice, please, for God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. Now, you may be saying, well, Pastor, how does Philippians 2, 5 to 11, connect with what you're saying as we look at the Holy Spirit in the life of Jesus Christ, in the life of our perfect example, the Lord Jesus Christ? So, first of all, Jesus Christ, who is God, I, 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 I deliberately read that, who being God, taught it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the, firm, the form rather of a servant. He being God, yet, Notice what the scripture says, that the Holy Spirit was given to Jesus Christ without measure. He received, in other words, total, the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ, yet, yet, while he was on earth, he depended on the Holy Spirit. Let me make this point clear again. He being God, <laughs> knowing all things, perfect man, perfect God, fully man, fully God, condescended, became a man, but 
the Holy Spirit was given to him without measure, yet for all intents and purposes, while he was on earth, he depended fully on the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Blessed be the wonderful name of the Lord. Notice what John the Baptist said, for the Spirit was given to him without measure. You know, John tells us again in John chapter one and verse number 16, and of his fullness have all we received and grace for grace or grace multiplied by grace. The Holy Spirit was given to our Lord Jesus Christ without measure, yet he depended on the Holy Spirit. Now we could stop there and say, okay, Sister Alexander, let's pray now. No, but there's some more things I want to say on this. I want to go now to Luke chapter four. Luke chapter four. How do I know that Jesus Christ depended fully on the Holy Spirit? He says, I came down from heaven John chapter 6 and verse number 38, not to do my will, but the will of him that sent me. Hallelujah. Observe, please, Luke chapter 4 and verse 1. And Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost, of the Holy Spirit, Mentioned in John chapter 3 and verse number 34. And being full of the Holy Spirit. He depended on the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Full of the Holy Spirit. It pleased the Father that in him in Jesus Christ should all the fullness of the Godhead. It pleased God. Yes, hallelujah. For it pleased the Father that in him should all the fullness of God dwell. Blessed be the wonderful name of the Lord. The Apostle Paul mentions in Colossians chapter 2 and verse number 3. In him are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and of knowledge. We're talking about Jesus the Christ. All right. The Apostle Paul went on to strengthen it in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse number 30. But of him are we in Christ Jesus who is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. So in him, yes, dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead bodily and we are complete in him. So he was full of the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. But notice please, in the very said verse, Luke chapter four and verse one, and Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost returned from Jordan, notice please, and was led by the Spirit. So he was not only full of the Spirit, but he was led by the Holy Spirit. Oh, that we would seek to be led by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit led him. He chose to allow the Holy Spirit to lead him. You see, he sought to please the Father. 
And we need to do all in our power to please the Father. It is a decision that you've got to make. Not everybody is going to follow you because you choose to please the Father. Not everybody is going to follow you because you choose to be led by the Spirit of God. No. Most of the times you would have to go it alone. But the Bible tells us that when a man's ways please God, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. Hallelujah. So he was led by the Spirit, but led by the Spirit where? Into the wilderness. Yes, brethren, not because you are led by the Spirit of God. It will always be nice and, and rosy and, you know, you, you, you're on the highway, you, you know, you're in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. No, it would not always be like that. But if you are led of the Spirit, there is no fear wherever God leads. And you would have heard me say this over and over again. Where he leads, he feeds. And where he guides, he provides. So he was led by the Spirit where? Into the wilderness. Yes, not into wonderland, but into the wilderness, hard, dry, patched place. But you see, once you are led by the Holy Spirit, he will sustain you. He will direct you. The Bible reminds us in Psalm 37 from the 23rd verse, the steps of a good man a good woman, they are ordered by the Lord and he delights in our way because he is directing us. Jesus was led by the Spirit, thrust out as it were by the Spirit. So it is very, very important that we stay connected to him. Hallelujah. Oh, he would lead us in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Glory be to God. He will cause, as I mentioned earlier, even our enemies to be at peace with us because our ways are pleasing to him. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And observe, please, that he was, he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. And what happened there? And, and after 40 days being tempted of the enemy and so on, after fasting and praying for 40 days and 40 nights, you know, and having ended, and when they, when they were ended that time, of spending time, quality time with Almighty God. And that is so important. The Holy Spirit at times leads you. you. You just don't want food. That's why we need to be sensitive to his leading. Oh, yes. Time must be taken out. Quality time must be taken out to be led by him to spend quality time with him and he will direct you as to how much time you ought to spend in his presence. Sometimes it's an entire day. Sometimes it's three days, five days, seven days. And you don't have to boast about that. You just seek to be led by him and he will direct our parts and notice please um you know the the whole idea of the the temptations 
command that these stones be made bread. Um, and, and Jesus said unto him, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Um, and then he, he take him up to the mountain and so on. And Jesus, he says to the enemy, says to Jesus, if you will bow down and worship me, all shall be thine. I'll give you everything, all this thing, all the kingdoms of this world. Oh, but Jesus knew himself. He knew who he was. And he said, get thee behind me, Satan, for thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shall thou serve. Yes, there's another one. Look at, look at verse number, number 12, uh, verse 10. Um, then he took him up to another place, to the pinnacle. And he says, if you are the son of God, cast yourself down from hence. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge over thee and so on. So here's the enemy now seeking to quote the word of God. But he must make mistake. Because he cannot, he cannot properly, um, he cannot properly envisage, uh, not sorry, not envisage, but he cannot um, swallow down truth, because truth is what sets us free. His aim is to keep us in bondage. So he did not quote the scriptures right. Psalm ninety-one. No, he went out. Verse number twelve. Jesus says, "Thou shalt not tempt the Lord." thy God. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Now I want, I, I, I read those three, those, because it's taken from one book, the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 13. Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 13. Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse number 16. Well, Pastor, why Deuteronomy and Deuteronomy that Jesus quoted from? Well, the word Deuteronomy has to do with the repetition, the repetition of the word, the repetition of the law, the repetition of the precepts, the repetition of the ordinances, the repetition of the commandments. That's the only way you're going to be defeated by the wicked one being led of the spirit of God. The Holy Spirit takes the word of God. You notice our perfect example. He was led by the spirit and he used the word of God. The word of God is referred to in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse number 17 as what? as the sword of the spirit and the sword of the spirit is the word of god ephesians chapter 6 and verse number 17 so jesus used the word to counteract every attack and to bring to nothing every attack of the wicked one notice he used the word, it is written, it is written, it is written. The word of God is the sword of the spirit. Are you seeing the connection this evening? Our perfect example was full of the spirit. Our perfect example, the Lord Jesus Christ was led by the spirit. Our perfect example, the Lord Jesus Christ, used the sword of the Spirit. Yes, the Word of God. But look at that again. Luke chapter 4 and verse number 14. And Jesus, the what? Returned in the power of the Spirit. So he was, he was full of the spirit yet he was he chose to be led by the spirit and he returned in the power of the spirit john chapter uh, luke chapter 4 and verse number 14 he returned in the power of the spirit hallelujah Luke chapter 4 and verse number 14. No wonder why Luke could say how God 
Acts chapter 10 and verse number 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him because he was full of the spirit. He was led by the spirit. He used the sword of the spirit. Glory be to God. And he returned in the power of the spirit. Oh, but it didn't stop there. No, no, no. Jesus depended fully on the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Notice, please, the prophetic utterances, the workings of the Holy Spirit came. The Bible tells us that he entered the synagogue and he opened the book, verse number 17. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. Being led by the Spirit, the prophetic utterances from the Word of God came. Remember, the Word of God is what? He used what? The sword of the Spirit because he depended on the Holy Spirit in everything that he said and did. Luke chapter 4 and verse 18 and most of us, I believe, will be able to quote this. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he hath anointed me. Notice, please, the person of the Holy Spirit. He hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and the recovering of sight to, be, to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Notice, please, hallelujah. Verse number 21 again, depending on the spirit, he says, this day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. Brethren, what an assurance. What a confident assurance that we have have when we depend on the spirit when we depend on the holy spirit who is not far from us but who lives in us when we allow him to lead us notice he works in the word he works through the word dwelling in us he dwells in us but he responds to the word the word of almighty god oh what a privilege and an honor no wonder why jesus was able to say in john chapter 6 and verse number 63 the words that i speak unto you they are it and they are life hallelujah oh paul reminds us in second corinthians chapter 3 and verse number 6 he says the letter kill it but the spirit gives life oh the word of god means nothing to us in fact, Christianity would mean nothing to us except the Holy Spirit quickens the word to our spirit. Oh, he lives in us. We need to trust him. We need to depend upon him more and more. And then, and only then, we will seek to eliminate the words something tell me you know something was telling me you know 
I should have listened to that something. No. The Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit was directing me. The Holy Spirit told me to stand still. The Holy Spirit led me in a particular direction. Hallelujah. I haven't spent time in his presence. I am returned in the power of the Spirit of God, knowing that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Oh, that we would seek to depend fully on the Holy Spirit. Our perfect example, the Lord Jesus Christ depended on the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, for sending Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that you came. <laughs> oh, and you spoke so much about the Holy Spirit. And you depended on him, even though you were full of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit was given to you without measure. Yet you depended upon him. May we depend upon you in every area of our lives. Thank you for the Holy Spirit who enables us to pray according to the mind of God. Hallelujah. According to the mind of the Father. Oh Lord, I thank you for those who have never trusted you as Savior and Lord. May they say yes to, do, to you as they repent of their sins. May they start to think differently. Think on you, the things that are true and just and pure and lovely and honest and of good report. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for leading and directing us. Even as we would spend some time in prayer tonight. In the name of Jesus the Christ. Blessed be the wonderful name of our God. Well, it's back to you, our moderator, Sister Alexander. Blessings on you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor, for that timely word. And I would say foundational word, foundational truth that we need to remember, it all ties in nicely. God is our everything. We need to depend totally and fully on the Holy Spirit. And for those who are viewing and have come to that realization, whether you be viewing on Facebook or on Zoom presently or on YouTube afterwards, you come to that realization that you see me, I need to put God first and you need a little bit more encouragement and guidance as you would take that step and give your life over to the Lord. We encourage you to get in touch with us so that at Cura Pentecostal Empowerment Ministries International so that we'll be able to join with you and guide you in your growth. You can reach us at 662-4047. At this time, we want to continue in that atmosphere of depending on God, and we want to do that through our time of prayer. I have entitled this time of prayer as Building Our House. And a great section of the prayer time will deal with different aspects of our particular house, Cure Pentecostal Empowerment Ministries International. And we have different persons who will focus on different aspects. And 
I would want to just start the ball rolling with bro brother Victor Daniel, and he will focus our prayer time on that important mandate of missions and all the various church activities that we have linked to missions and discipleship, et cetera. So I, I hand it over to Brother Daniel at this time. Thank you, Sister Alberta, Joseph Alexander. I trust everyone can hear my voice and I thank you for this privilege of praying with the saints of God. Thank Pastor Pope for the work that he is doing. As we go into prayer, I remind you of the great commission of God, where he said in Matthew 28, 19, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. This is our great commission. Heavenly Father, we have a lot of outreach activities in the church, including our mission team plans, oh God. Father, oh God, we thank you that our pastor, Pastor Pope, oh God, has been burdened, oh God, his heart has been burdened for us to go out and be missionaries of not only of our environs, oh God, but to team up with other churches, oh God. Father, oh God, we pray for the spiritual preparation and development of the missionary team, oh God. We pray, oh God, as your word said in Ephesians 6, 19, that I may open my mouth boldly and be as, as in I, oh God, to make known the mysteries of the gospel. Father, oh God, we pray that we put on that armor and go out because it will be spiritual warfare, oh God, but we know that we have you on our side. We pray, oh God, that all members will come on board who are tasked with this responsibility and join together and not, oh God, be, be wavering in their spirit, oh God. Father, oh God, we pray for the flexibility of the mission team, that they will trust in your plan, oh God, and lean not to their own understanding, as you said in Proverbs 3, 5, but you, oh God, will direct always with all your parts, oh God. We pray, oh God, that we will trust in your plan and we will be spiritually discerning, oh God, of what you have for us to accomplish on this missionary team. Father, oh God, we also pray for the financial support of the missionary team, oh God. We pray, oh God, that whatever finances are to be available, that they would come speedily and would be done for what purpose it is set for, oh God. We also, oh God, pray in this time, oh God, for the health and safety and the travel, oh God, of all the missionaries. Because, Father, we know, oh God, that we would have to go to various parts of the country. And we pray, oh God, for your protection because of what's happening today in this world, oh God in this country, O oh God. Father, O oh God, we pray for the Holy Spirit to open the blinded eyes of the unbelievers, to incline their ears towards the word of God, O oh God. Father, we send forth your Holy Spirit, O oh God, to soften their hearts, O oh God, convict them, O oh God, where they stand. The lowly, the highly, O oh God, those, O oh God, with titles, whatever, O oh God, we pray that your Holy Spirit would convict them, O oh God. Father, oh God, we also pray for the spiritual development and strength of the partner churches, oh God, that comes together to work with our team, oh God. We hold, oh God, that we will dwell together in unity because we know how good and how pleasant it is, as you said in Psalms 1 to the 3. Father, we pray, oh God, that we will not only make your people, the unbelievers, disciples, oh God, not only make them acquaintance, but we will make them disciples, oh God, of your word not just having a, a one-time encounter. We pray, oh God, that we will follow up with that support. And almighty God, we bring the outreach program, St. Joseph Love Fellowship, oh God. Father, oh God, here we are. We know what's happening in that area right now, oh God. There has been a lot of banditry, shooting, killing, and the people have been hardening their hearts, oh God, even though they have gotten the word of God. We pray, oh God, that there will be a revival and that all people of the senior church would come together and pray, oh God, for what is about, about to happen in this church, or that area. We pray for a miracle, oh God. Father, we also bring, oh God, the church on the go, which is 
a day in his court on May 7th, oh God, we pray for that, that it will be blessed, that it will, people will participate, oh God. We pray, oh God, that we will have a great day in your presence, oh God, on that day. We also bring, oh God, the various programs that we have, the Sunday morning service on TV6, oh God. Father, we pray, oh God, that it will continue to be a blessing to those who are hearing it and to those who hear it for the first time. We pray that it will reach some unsafe person, oh God. We pray, oh God, that they would understand the word of God, that your Holy Spirit will incline their ears, oh God, and their hearts, oh God. Make them have a desire and a passion, oh God. Also on the Thursday morning program at 5 on I-95.5, oh God, we pray, oh God, that all the speakers, oh God, will be blessed and ready to do your service, oh God. We pray, oh God, that there will not be a struggle, oh God, to come out and share your word. Let everyone in the church, oh God, have this passion, this desire, this enthusiasm, oh God, to want to share your word, to come together to say, what can I do? We know we all can be ministers, oh God. But we can pray. We just like church on the go, the abbreviations is cog, oh God. We can be that cog in the wheel that keeps on moving and moving that engine and keep it smoothly, oh God. Father, oh God, we know only you, oh God, can be the one that can open up the way, oh God. And we come to you very humbly, oh God, and asking you, God, as we make our request known that this venture, this mission, oh God, be successful for your glory, O oh God, not for ours, O oh God, but for your glory. In the name of Jesus, we ask this, O oh Lord. Amen. Amen. And we want to thank Brother Victor for remembering all the various outreach and missions activities of our house. And for these activities to to take place in decency and in order and full of the Holy Spirit, we need committed church ministries and commit, committed leadership. And as such, we want to invite Brother Seely at this time to pray for our ministries and our church leaders that we will continue to remain focused on God's will and focus on the mandate at hand. So we invite Brother Sealy to unmute his mic and have his camera so that we could go together in prayer with him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. A pleasant good night to everyone. Greetings in the name of the Lord. As we continue to look to the Lord in prayer, we are living in Perilous times. We are living in a time when there is so much that is happening in our world. And we know beyond a shadow of a doubt that we are in the last of the last days. Because when we look at the scriptures, the Bible tells us all these things will come to pass before the end comes. We are seeing violence and we are seeing all sorts of you know evil that is taking place upon the earth. But all we can do is pray, pray, hallelujah. While we are looking up, the Bible said, when we see these things, look up. But while we are looking up, we need to be consistent in prayer. We need to pray for one another. Amen? Hallelujah. And when we pray for one another, the Bible said we will be fulfilling the law of Christ. So let us look to the Lord tonight as we pray for uh, church leaders. We want to pray for church ministries, we want to pray for our pastor especially, amen, because we are seeing all around the world where leaders, even leaders have been under serious attack. So shall we pray tonight. Father, tonight, as we continue in this time of prayer tonight, Lord, we thank you, oh God, because Lord, you said in your word, you said, him that cometh unto me, with the no wise cast out. And Lord, you hear the prayer of the righteous. You hear the prayer of the saints, oh God. And Father, I thank you tonight that 
oh God, hallelujah, while we pray, while we are praying tonight, we know, oh God, that you are hearing our prayer. You say, call unto me, and I will hear an answer, and I will show you great and mighty things that you do not know. So tonight, Lord, we pray for families in the church, families that are, 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 that are faced with, oh God, all kinds of persecution, families that are faced with all kinds of, of, of conflict, we, we pray, oh God, tonight, Father, as we lift them up, oh God, before your throne. Lord, you see and you know all things, Father. Hallelujah. And we know, oh God, uh, hallelujah. You said the words that come out of my mouth, it will not return unto me, boy, but it will accomplish. So we are sending your word tonight, Lord. And we know, oh God, your word will accomplish. We pray for those, oh God, that have needs tonight, those that are sick in their body. Oh God, we lift them up tonight, Father. We pray for healing, Father. Hallelujah. You said healing is the children's bread. And tonight, oh God, as we pray, as we believe you tonight, Father, we know that you look after your word to perform it. So we pray that you want to perform your word in the lives of all those that believe in you for a miracle tonight, Father. Lord, there are so many that are distressed tonight. So many believers, Father, are going to all forms of persecution. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we lift them all up before you, oh God. Every need, every need, we bring it before you tonight. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, we pray for those that are sick in body. We pray for those that are, that, that are going through all kinds of different changes in their lives, oh God. We know, oh God, that we are serving a God who is mighty, hallelujah, and we thank you, Father, tonight because you said you will never leave us and we thank you for this glorious hope tonight, Father. So, Father, we pray as we continue, oh God, that you will continue to, to guide, to protect. Lord, when we look even in our very nation, Trinidad and Tobago, we are seeing, oh God, so much evil, so much destruction, so much murders, so much killing. But, oh God, we come, oh God, hallelujah. You said, you tell us to pray for those that are in authority so that we can live a quiet and a peaceful life, oh God. So we lift up, oh God, we lift them up before you tonight, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, and we pray that you will give them wisdom to lead, oh God. Because when we look, oh God, it seems sometimes you it, it seems as though we are losing the battle. But oh God, we must also remember that you said that the battle is not ours, but the battle is the Lord's. And Father, as we continue to join in with, 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 with the heavenly hosts, Father. As we stand in the gap, we pray, Lord, that you will continue to strengthen, continue, Lord, to guide, continue, Lord, to protect. We pray for a divine intervention in family lives, oh God, hallelujah. And we come against, one more time, Father, the bloodshed in our country. So many are dying, Father. We do not know if they make it right with you. The enemy is having a field day. But one thing we thank you for tonight, Father, is that you said him, come it unto me. You will know why he's cast. So watch over us, keep us, as we continue on this pilgrim journey. Because we know, Lord, any day now, you will burst the crowds, come and receive us. So while we wait, Father, we pray that you will continue to keep us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother Seely. And it keeping in that same vein as we continue to build our house in this prayer time. We want to focus even more specifically on some of the personal needs of our members. And we, as such, want to invite Brother and Sister Jordan to pray at this time. 
any other personal needs that are added to the chat, um, please know that they will be covered at the end. Thank you, brother and sister Jonah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, my dear sister. Eternal God tonight, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord, for the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. Father, tonight, in Jesus' name, we are depending on the Holy Spirit's leading and direction. And Father, tonight, with these requests that we have here tonight, we lift, O oh God, tonight, Brother Peter Gopal, we pray tonight in the name of Jesus Christ for his continual improvement in his health. God, we pray that you will continue to keep him, to strengthen him, and to do that work in him that only you could do. In Jesus' name, we thanksgiving. We pray also tonight, O oh God, for the Walcott family. We pray, God, for their healing and the well-being of their whole life, for every situation in their life. We are asking, O oh God, that you will extend your hand of mercy and you will grant them the desires of their heart and strengthen them. Help them to continue to hold on to you and to trust you. In Jesus' name we ask for thanksgiving. Tonight, O oh God, we ask, O oh God, for the healing of Sister Mary Anne Marie Martin. God, we pray, O oh God, that you will do that work in her, in the healing of her hand, that hand that has been injured, O oh God. We pray in the name of Jesus with thanksgiving, knowing, O oh God, that you can do anything. We are asking for complete healing for that hand. In the name of Jesus Christ with thanksgiving. Tonight, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, we lift those, O oh God, who have lost, O oh God, who have lost their loved ones. We lift them before you, O oh God, tonight, and we ask them for strength for them. We ask them, O oh God, for your divine hand to continue, O oh God, to guide, to lead, and to direct them, to strengthen them. Give them the strength that they need, O oh God, to continue to serve you in spirit and in truth. Help them, O oh God, not to be discouraged at this time after losing their loved ones. We pray in the name of Jesus with thanksgiving. And Lord, we thank you, O oh God, for the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. We want to thank God tonight that we are healed by those stripes and, in fact, we were healed. So we continue to claim healing, healing for our brother Edison. We pray for a return to good health for our brother. We pray that all that is within his body that needs to be regulated will be regulated by the Holy Spirit. And we pray that our brother will be able to walk again in good health and strength. We bring our sister Erica Williams we thank you, Father, for bringing her through her eye surgery. And now we pray for her complete recovery in the name of Jesus. Sister Pamela, we are praying for her healing as well. We are also praying for favor in obtaining the necessary appointment. And we speak against a worsening of her situation. Maybe this is what would happen under normal circumstances, but Lord, this is your daughter, and we claim healing for her. Our brother John, who was involved in that terrible accident, but you brought him through. We thank you for the strides he has made after that accident, oh God. And we are praying tonight for his continued recuperation. And we pray also for the healing of his vision. Our sister Debbie Mansing, Lord, we pray for complete return to good health for this, our sister. Our sister Farida, we pray also for a complete return to good health in the name of Jesus. And Father, tonight we remember all those who are receiving treatment for various ailments. We pray for those who are undergoing tests and awaiting results. We pray for those who have already received some bad news from their doctors, Lord. 
and maybe they have not shared it with anyone, Lord, but we pray for them. We pray for all those who are struggling with mental health issues, oh God. We pray, oh God, for those who are caring for family members who are sick. Lord, we pray for strength. We pray for healing, oh God. And we pray for all those who have different conditions where a part of the lifestyle would influence it, Lord. We pray for wisdom, wisdom in our lifestyle, wisdom in our everyday choices, oh God. Father, we thank you that healing is the children's bread. We thank you that we are your children and we continue to praise your name, oh God, as we walk in health, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We continue. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And we want to pray for effective or efficient government, economic growth, and crime reduction. And I just want to introduce by way of verse of scripture taken from First Timothy chapter one, verse First Timothy, sorry, chapter two, verse one. Therefore, I exhort first of all that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. I'll continue in verse two for kings and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. So Father in heaven, we continue in prayer in the name of your son, Jesus. And Father, we lift up our government, those whom you have allowed to be steward of our nation, O oh God. Father, we lift up the men and women, O oh God, who form our government. Lord Father, those who occupy the chambers, O oh God, of government. Father, the president, the leader of our state. Father, O oh God, our prime minister, the leader of the opposition, the members of parliament, both of the upper and lower house, the judiciary. Father, the chief justice. Father, the members of the protective services, the executive, oh God, the cabinet. Father, we bring all these persons, even the functionaries who, oh God, perform, oh God, duties of state, oh God, within our ministries of government, Lord. Father, oh God, we bring them before you in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray, oh God, that, oh God, you would use those whom who are called by your name, O oh God. Father, those men and women, O oh God, who are children of your kingdom, Father, that, O oh God, that you would quicken them by your Holy Spirit to be salt and light, O oh God. Father, O oh God, to be influencers, O oh God, in their environment, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, O oh God. Father, we thank you, O oh God, for your mathematical formula, O oh God. Father, that as we, as your people, seek first the kingdom of God, Father, there is multiplication, O oh God. Father, Lord, Father, you will bring the increase in the name of Jesus, in the, in the midst, O oh God, of the turmoil, in the midst of the darkness, in the midst, O oh God, of the confusion and dismay. Father, we thank you, O oh God. Father, that, O oh God, your people, O oh God, will make a difference. And we pray that we will rise up as your people, Father, kingdom people, O oh God, to make a kingdom difference in the name of Jesus. Father, O oh God, we pray, O oh God, for economic growth. And Father, economic growth, O oh God, Father, Father, Lord, the, the man, the natural man does not see it, O oh God, but it is tied, O oh God, to spiritual righteousness, spiritual growth. And Father, we pray in the name of Jesus, Lord. Father, that for true economic growth, where men and women, boys and girls will truly, O oh God, be blessed, O oh God. Not just have riches or wealth, O oh God, Father, 
not just where the GDP will increase, but where there is wholesome development. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus for spiritual growth in our nation. Spiritual, oh God, increase in righteousness, oh God. And Father, we just thank you for the blessings that will abound, oh God, as your people, oh God, step out, oh God, Father, in faith, in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray as well, oh God, Father, for the reduction in crime. Father, Father, many of your people have been crying day and night, night and day, oh God, Father. Father, for intervention, Lord. Father, for spiritual and divine intervention. And we continue to cry out unto you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father. Help us as your people, O oh God, Father. Lord, to be convicted in our hearts, in our minds, in our souls, in our spirit, Father. Father, to walk in righteousness, O oh God. To do, O oh God, what is right, O oh God. To turn away from sin, O oh God. To turn away from depravity and iniquity, O oh God. Father, let your people, O oh God, step up in the name of Jesus. That we, O oh God, will point the way, O oh God. That we will be a lighthouse, O oh God, a beacon of righteousness, Lord. Father, help us, Lord, to turn away from wickedness, O oh God. To seek your face, O oh God. Father, and to cry out for our nation in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for a turnaround in our nation as far as crime is concerned, O oh God. We pray for reduction in crime through, O oh God, your church in the name of Jesus that we will rise up and do, O oh God, what you have called us to do, O oh God. To be salt and light, to carry out the great commission, Lord. In the, O oh God, preaching the word and seeing, O oh God, men and women, boys and girls, hearts, being transformed, oh God, and being transformed and transferred, oh God, Father, from the kingdom of darkness to your marvelous light in the name of Jesus. And we pray for those, oh God, Father, whom you have called, oh God, Father, to be, oh God, law enforcers, to be those of policy makers, to be, to be those, oh God, who would be influencers in the community. Let us, oh God, do our part, oh God. Father, to be, O oh God, influencers, to be those who would intervene, O oh God, to turn lives around, O oh God, to whatever course of action that you have called us to do, that we would save a life, we would turn a life of a boy, a girl, a man and a woman around, from a life of crime into your marvelous life. Father, we pray these things in the name of Jesus, and we give you thanks for doing it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank all the persons who have given up their time to carry us before the throne room of God to lift up our different prayer requests. As I said, our prayer requests revolved around building our house and we prayed for the work that we have to do in terms of missions. We remember to pray for our personal needs, for our leadership. And we also remember to pray for our government. And I will be taking the last batch of requests. And following that, we'll give the special announcements. So let us again... Go before the Lord as I would seek to lift up some additional prayer requests. Dear Heavenly Father, we even know at this time that our students have gone into regional exam mode. Some have started their CSEC exams with the, the orals, the language orals, and Others are gearing up for different lab exams, CSEC, CAPE, university, tertiary exams, and other important exams. And we pray for, as we pray for the children of our assembly, by extension, we lift up the children of the nation. 
that you would be with them at this time, that they would be diligent, that they would go to their work, they would make that extra time, make that extra effort because you are no man's debtor. Dear God, we pray that what they would study would be on the paper, their father, and what will be on the paper is what they will be able to do. Dear God, we rebuke any flusteredness, we rebuke any ne negative thoughts that would come into their minds that they cannot succeed and that you are not with them. Dear God, we, we covet the, and pray for the parents and guardians of these students that you know, they will be there to support and encourage. We may not know all the aspects of the, what the exam that they have to do or the contents of what they have to study, but Dear God, help us to be there as that moral, spiritual, and prayerful support, even as we would lean on you. Dear God, we also continue to lift up those in our assembly who have placed their special requests before you. Dear God, we remember Sister Casa this time, Sister Jacqueline Casa, their father. And dear God, we rebuke that pain in her back, their father, Dear God, we put it on note. Dear God, we pray for healing. Dear God, we pray for that, you know, relaxation of the system, of the muscular system, or whatever other system in the body that may be leading to that pain. Dear God, we pray for a relief. Dear God, we pray that she will get a good night's sleep, good rest, and be able to, you know, say that she's feeling better and soon, dear God, with a testimony. So we thank you for bringing that release and that relief in Jesus' name. Amen. Dear God, even at this time, we want to remember our Caleb project, dear God. We want to be able to expand and develop so that we could meet the needs of the, the, the members of the church through parking and other things that that particular um, portion of land will be will enable us to do in the future as a legacy project. So dear God, we call the various ideas, we call the various funds to come so that we'll be able to make the necessary down payment and, and, and pay off. Dear God, we thank you for the favor that has been given to us for the use of it thus far. And dear God, even as the landowner would have sought to bless us, we pray for a blessing upon him, a release in any particular area in his family that may seem to be tied up. Let that blessing of blessing your people return unto a blessing unto him, dear father. Dear God, even at this time, we want to lift up one of our other missionary activities, which is the missionary work to the Spanish speakers, dear father. Dear God, you know the challenges that they face, you know, the dynamics of uh, working with a population that is on the move and not just on the move from one church to our next church, but literally a population that is on the move from one continent to the next or one country to the next. And there go, we thank you that Cure Pentecostal Empowerment Ministry International could be, you know, that, that beacon, that oasis where as they would travel, as they would migrate, as they would move, as they would come here and go back or move on to another country where they could find spiritual sustenance, you know, emotional encouragement, their father. So we continue to pray for the work of that ministry that we will continue to be able to expand and impact uh, the Spanish speakers in the area of QREP and environs and abound their father. Dear God, we remember the various district activities that are coming up, uh, the, the rally coming up this Saturday. Dear God, the, the district sports, the 5K, you know, various activities that give us an opportunity to, to grow in different ways. And dear God, we pray for the, the success, um, good order, and as I said, success with the execution of the various ministries, therefore, these various activities, and that, you know, there will be 
good participation, dear Lord. Dear God, we, you know, indeed thank you for all that you have done. If there be any you know, particular needs that we have not mentioned, of course, we would have prayed for those who would have lost loved one. We, we would have had our recent loss as a church body with Brother Matthew and now uh, Brother Fitzgerald Noel, dear God. And we pray that you will, you know, continue to bind us as a, as a family, dear Father, as we would learn support and as we would prepare for the upcoming service on Friday. Dear God, we cover everything under your blessed hand, dear Lord. We thank all those who have worked behind the scenes to ensure that this uh, the prayer session, our Bible study, would have come off the ground today. We uh, thank you and for your goodness and your continued grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If we could put a little reaction, prayer reaction, crap offering reaction from your Zoom emojis, that would be that would be great. As I just remind us of some important announcements again. Do yes, I'm see. Oh, I've yeah, seen a love heart and the craps. Uh, Etc. You could find that at the bottom in your reaction section of your um, screen. So thanks very much. Amen and amen. And as good stewards, we remind you that uh, these activities today could not happen without the support of you being present. So we thank you for being here. And for those who will join after, those on Facebook, those present on Zoom, those who will be joining via YouTube. And we also covet your, your support as you would sow into the ministry financially. And our account, in case you would want to give, is 3501010. Eight three three zero one. That's our Republic Bank account, and I will say it one more time: three five zero one zero one six eight three three zero one. If you still missed it, you can feel free to call the office at six six. Two four zero four seven. That is six six two four zero four seven. If you would like to find out additional information with respect to our various activities, if you would like to share with us that you have accepted the Lord and you want to have that better walk with Him and how you could do it, feel free to call. And per chance you decide you don't want to call, but you want to email, we have you covered. You can email us at cpemi office at gmail.com. C-P-E-M-I office, O-F-F-I-C-E, at gmail.com. And our admin staff would be happy to respond to you. So you are invited, particularly for our members who have signed up to our annual general meeting, which will happen tomorrow uh, evening. So you're invited to that. Um, please ensure that you call the office if you still need to register. Also, our we be reminded that on Thursday, the mass choir for a day in his court will be meeting again for practice in the evening time. And we still open, I believe, for male voices and additional voices. You come and we'll sort out the, the voices. 
in case you're a little worried about the singing. And we happy to say that come Sunday, we will be back in the house of the Lord, uh, starting with Sunday school and then moving on to our time of worship. And for those who may be Spanish speakers, we also have interpretation during worship from half past nine. And do remember that Christian Education Hour starts a little earlier at half past eight. And for those who may not still be able to make it out, but you want to hear good word and good food, you can join in on TV6 at 8 a.m. on Sunday morning, or you can feel free to join in even tomorrow on I-95.5 FM, for, um, tomorrow means, sorry, Thursday from five. So again, we pray God's blessings over everyone. We thank you for being here. And we know that we are more than conquerors because we lean on Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Thanks very much again. God bless. Bendiciones. God bless you.